Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole. In today's video, we are finally talking about my skincare favorites of 2020 so far. I certainly have a lot of products next to me to talk about. I am going to be using some of these this morning in my skincare routine. What I'm going to do is walk you guys through my morning routine while also talking about some of my other favorites, products I might rotate in products I will use at night. I don't want to waste any time, so we're going to get into it, starting with the Bioderma Micellar Water. I had run out of micellar water for a while, so I started using just cleanser in the morning. And, you know, the thing is, it does work for me, but I still prefer to occasionally use a micellar water. And the one I'm using today is the Bioderma Sensitive. I actually, I finally ordered a larger size, but I, I got the blue lid, the one that's supposed to be for dehydrated skin. I'm just going to tell you guys right now, some of this video might be a bit repetitive as uh, some of my old favorites are, are still my favorites. You know, if you find a skincare product that works out for you, why keep looking type of thing. This is the Good Molecules Niacinamide Brightening Toner and it has been my favorite for about a year. I did try the e.l.f. Hydrating Essence to see how they compare, but ultimately this is the one I've gone back to. This is my repurchase. This is just an absolutely incredible toner. Part of why I like this so much is that it's got enough viscosity to it that I don't need uh, my, my cloths, I don't need anything. I can just put it onto my hands and then tap it into my skin. And yet, I'm not going to use it right now because I don't really feel that I need to use a toner right now. You know, again, with all of these steps in a skincare routine, it's not a situation of you need them every single day, even if you do love them. For me, I always use this in the evenings. I do always use this with my retinol at night. I feel like it's a great combination. But right now, I'm just kind of letting my skin sit for a moment before I go in with my vitamin C. Oh, actually, should we take this time to debunk some skincare theories. It's funny, I feel like I have some slightly controversial opinions on skincare, and yet the way that I formed these opinions is by going directly to the scientific literature. So niacinamide and vitamin C, can you combine them? I've done it many times, and I've had many comments from people saying, don't listen to her, she doesn't know what she's talking about, you can't combine those ingredients. That particular comment mentality is very frustrating to me because, you know, I, again, I have gone to the primary literature and it's just not a, a concern. And, I, and yet I know that there are companies, <clears throat> Decium, perpetuating this idea. I'll make sure I have a link below since Kind of Steven wrote up a really good blog post on this. But basically, the concern with combining niacinamide and vitamin C comes from the potential for those two ingredients to form a complex. That is a valid point. However, you have to look at the conditions in order to form that complex. And if I'm remembering this correctly from memory, it was about 200 degrees Fahrenheit at a pH of two over 75 hours. Now here's the thing. If your skin is capable of replicating those conditions, the very last thing you should be concerned about is your skincare. We need to get you out of the volcano that you're in. I mean, probably you died a while ago, but you get what I'm saying here, right? Like, this is not a concern for those of us who are walking around with the normal temperature. Our skin resets its homeostasis to, you know, 5.56. It's just, it's just not a concern. So next up, and this is kind of a newer product, but I love it that much. It's got to go in this video. This is the Rosen Skincare Bright Citrus Vitamin C Serum. So it's a bit watery. I like to start by concentrating it on my forehead because, again, this is an ingredient that I've watched do absolutely amazing things to my expressive forehead lines. However, it is true that L ascorbic is a little bit more difficult of an ingredient and it absolutely may not work out for everybody. It's kind of funny because L ascorbic is considered the gold standard. There's certainly the most research around it, but I absolutely do not believe it is for everybody. In fact, even for me, if I'm having a lot of breakouts, it is close to a certain phase of the moon, I, I don't use L ascorbic in this area. And it's kind of a shame because I do feel it works best at uh, reducing any acne scars. So with the ingredient LAA, it is really important to have it at the correct pH, have it in a stabilized formula, have it protected from light and air, all of which Rosen Skincare did so well with this product for 
$18. I can't get over it. And the reality is it's that low pH that may be irritating for some people. You do feel it on your skin. You do feel that abrupt disruption of your skin to a much lower pH. So if you're more sensitive, you might consider a sodium ascorbyl phosphate vitamin C, which I also keep around because again, there are certain phases of the moon where this is what I use over an LAA. Uh, so I did repurchase the Mad Hippie Vitamin C Serum. I'm always kind of hesitant on recommending this one. I should be hesitant on both of these because basically if you cannot use citrus ingredients, you can't use this, you can't use this. You, you, you're kind of limited if you can't use citrus ingredients. I'm so grateful that I can. But if that is the case for you, if you're looking for something completely fragrance-free, completely citrus oil-free, I would go with uh, Gin Amber Beauty's 20% Vitamin C. That is a fantastically formulated vitamin, sodium ascorbyl phosphate vitamin C. And yet in complete and honest truth, these two probably are my absolute favorites. This one is probably my most repurchased. Well, probably my most repurchased sodium ascorbyl phosphate serum. I did buy Ule Henriksen's True Serum a lot. And now I think it's just, it's okay. It's a good starter sodium ascorbyl phosphate. So what I'm gonna do is let this sink into my skin for a little bit while I go back to my night routine and tell you about my, my cleansing ritual. I should have grabbed a cleansing oil or a cleansing balm as that's what I use to remove my SPF or my makeup, but that hasn't changed. I still like Emma Hardy, Eve Lum. I'm not picky as long as it's got a lot of enjoyable texture and scent. I love it and I go back in with something to wash all of that scent off so it works out well for me. But as far as cleansing, oh I've gone back to an old favorite. Fresh did send me the big size of their soy face cleanser and it's I've never been so happy to receive a jumbo size skincare product. I've got this in the mail and was like I will use all of that. And I still love my Foreo 3 for sensitive skin. I had bought a Foreo 2, the, the smaller version, and I was it was okay. I didn't hate it. I didn't absolutely love it, but this one I do absolutely love. This one was gifted to me by the company. I don't think I would have gone out of my way to buy an additional Foreo, but now that I've had this, mm, can't go back. You know what's kind of funny though? Back to the kind of controversial opinions. So sometimes I'll see people doing a skincare routine and using a Foreo or a Clarisonic and another gentle cleanser like this. And they'll sit there and they'll say, you know, make sure that you're not using any kind of physical exfoliation. And I'm just sitting there going, <laughs> that's physical exfoliation. This is technically physical exfoliation. This, technically physical exfoliation. The, you know what I feel happens in the skincare community? Have you guys ever played the game of telephone? You probably played this as kids. In case you don't know what I'm talking about. So the first kid will start out with a, a phrase, right? So my dog eats peanut butter. And he'll whisper it into the ear of the next kid. The kids will keep passing it down. And then by the time it gets to the end, the last person in the game will say, okay, so what you said was, my frog eats peas and butter. And everybody laughs, all the kids crack up because it's so off from what the original statement was. I feel like that happens in the skincare community very often. And the topic of physical exfoliants is just one example of that. Not to mention that I feel like there's a little bit of marketing getting mixed in. So the idea of physical exfoliants being bad kind of stems from Paula of Paula's Choice, who is very opposed to physical exfoliants of any kind. And that's completely fine. Physical exfoliants aren't going to work for everybody. That's fine that they don't work for Paula. However, she kind of perpetuated this idea of these scrubs causing micro tears and I've never been able to find any literature to back this up and yet I hear people continue to say that. And here's the thing, maybe you could see micro tears if you're using say a walnut scrub if you're really, really scrubbing your skin really hard. But on the flip side of the coin, I think that if you're using a very gentle physical exfoliant, even if you're using, you know, uh, Dr. Lancer's scrub. And as long as you're not pressing too hard, I don't think you should see any kind of micro tears. But because of this skincare telephone game, people are like, oh, you're, you're causing micro tears in your skin. And I genuinely know that putting this in my video is a hot take. So it was me talking about vitamin C and niacinamide, but I am, I'm so, I'm so thoroughly convinced. I actually, I talked about Dr. Lancer's book when I did my Dr. Lancer trial. I did finish it and I think it's an incredible read. He talks about how 
uh, he uses physical exfoliation for controlled inflammation. Now, inflammation might sound like a bad thing no matter how you look at it, but the fact is, inflammation is actually stimulating the skin. So if your inflammation is something that is very controlled, you know, not out of control, but you are in charge of it, then you could be stimulating collagen production, which of course has a wide range of benefits. And that's a big part of it too. I feel like it's so important to actually look at other people's results, you know? Sure, maybe, again, physical exfoliation may not be for everybody, but there's a lot of people who have good results with it. I'm out here doing different stuff that I want to talk to you about and almost forgot to mention it. So this is the Katao Matcha and Chia Essence Lotion. So I just used an essence after a serum, which is not the instructed order, right? But here's the thing, you have to take into account uh, you know, how sensitive an ingredient is, plus its texture. So the thing is, L-ascorbic is very sensitive, and that particular one I use is formulated to be really quite light in texture. So it makes sense to actually go in with my essence after that. You know, you just kind of have to play around with your skincare and figure out the order that is working with the products that you have. One of the most common questions that I get is, do you have to use only products from a specific brand? Absolutely not. In fact, I would even say that could go very wrong for you depending on certain factors. Take my Derma E trial as an example here. So that trial went absolutely horribly, but after that trial, I was able to use those products individually. And I tend to think that what was happening with that, and I even did say this in that video, uh, all of their products contained a lot of essential oils. And I think that with essential oils, a lot of the issue is how much of it you're using. So for me, I saw a lot of irritation, a lot of inflammation because using all Derma E was a lot of essential oils to put on my skin. Whereas when I just used one product in a routine that's mostly fragrance free, and that by the way, most of my routine is fragrance free, then and it can work for me. You know, it's just a, a matter of knowing your own skin, knowing your skin's limits to fragrance, to essential oils. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I prefer to recommend fragrance free, because if you are using a routine where you've maxed out your fragrance already, if you're gonna buy another product and bring it in, if it's got fragrance, it could cause problems. If it doesn't, it's probably not going to. I need a mirror to make sure I smooth this out well, which I definitely did not. Okay, so I'm using the e.l.f. 50 milligrams CBD eye cream. Oh, the good old eye cream debate. Do you really need an eye cream? So I have a video on this as well, and I, I do think that if you enjoy eye cream, keep using them. If you don't find that you need an eye cream, awesome. For me personally, this one is a completely fragrance-free $15 eye cream, so I don't have any problem with spending $15 on an eye cream, but I'll admit to you, I'm pretty much done with buying eye creams for $60 plus. I don't really think there's any added benefit for me personally, but again, you know, maybe some people enjoy a very pricey eye cream and that's great. So I do want to include some more of my night favorites into this video. So of course the COSRX Advanced Snail Mucin Essence. I do prefer to use this at night because of its texture. Sometimes it can be a little bit grumpy under makeup, but it is such an incredible ingredient for my skin. It is so healing. This is one of my absolute favorite products of all time. Whether you have acne, whether you have scarring, whether you want to prevent the signs of aging, it's just such a, an incredible, incredible product because it's 99% snail and snail is an excellent ingredient. Wow, that was such terrible phrasing. Not crushed up snail, but rather the snail mucin. I hope I didn't horrify anybody in that poor word choice. Anyway, uh, as far as my favorite nighttime serum in 2020, I'm going to have to admit to you, uh, the Shani Darden, Shani Darden Retinol Reform has been absolutely incredible, even though this is yet another one of those products where we could talk about skincare controversies. So this contains both retinol and lactic acid. And you've probably heard don't combine AHAs with retinols, but uh, you know, as you might notice, there's really not a lot of chemical exfoliants in my routine. I'm pretty cautious with them. I find that I can go overboard very easily, so I don't use a ton of AHAs. Uh, but this is a fairly low concentration of AHA. First of all, it just seems to be enough to really brighten your skin overnight, enough to not cause any kind of irritation, plus a lot of other ingredients in here that are very soothing. 
oh, you get such great results with this very quickly. Plus you're getting retinol in here. And I'm a huge fan of using oils, especially at night. I use a lot of oils at night. I gotta put a kind of new favorite in this video just because of how much I love this. You can see, I'm, this is an oil. I am using this constantly. This is Ashley Shannon's Skin Therapy Superfood Beauty Oil. Oh my gosh, it is so incredible. It leaves your skin so hydrated, glowing. It's really high in turmeric, enough that you can smell it. And for me, turmeric has been such a great anti-inflammatory ingredient. I do deal with a lot of inflammation because I have acne. So something that fights that is so critical for me and something that makes my skin glow. Mm, mm. And yet had I filmed this video, you know, a couple months ago, I would have to say herbivores emerald oil. I do like that one, but I have a, a new favorite CBD. So anyway, during the day, I like to use a lighter oil. So I'm gonna use the Biosense 100% Squalane. I'm so in awe of the fact that I made people upset with that video by saying that there's a difference between Biosense's squalane and The Ordinary's. The very simple fact is, yes, there is a difference between The Ordinary squalane and Biosense's squalane. And rather than go into all that again, I'll just link you the video as it's kind of a long explanation. But yeah, they are different. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with The Ordinary and it's going to work out for a lot of people. But you know, in that same video, I said I still prefer The Ordinary's lactic acid to Biosance's. There's just so much personal preference when we're talking about skincare and what works for one person doesn't for another. And you know, that's totally okay. That's completely fine. There is nothing wrong with saying, actually, I have an unpopular opinion here. I don't like Sunday Riley's good jeans. Uh, I do like Drunk Elephant, what, what have you. You know, it's, it's a lot of personal preference and it's all okay at the end of the day to have your own preference. But anyway, let's move on to moisturizer. I do feel like my moisturizer might surprise some of you guys. I'm gonna have to say my favorite in the year 2020 is the Dr. Dennis Gross Stress Repair Face Cream. They sent me this one a while ago and I liked it at the time, but it actually was not my favorite product from everything they had sent me. I said I prefer the eye cream. That was before I realized how long this little jar lasts. The thing is I have a more dry skin type so I tend to pile on certain moisturizers, but I don't need to with this one because it is so rich. This is enough to spread across my entire face. And I absolutely love that. I love to stretch my dollar. You know, again, this is actually a pricey moisturizer and usually I pick a less pricey one for this reason. But with this one lasting me so long, I really like it. And as far as the ingredients, this is rich in niacinamide adaptogens. Adaptogens seem to work out really well for me. They again have anti-inflammatory benefits. And as you've probably picked up on by now in this video, anti-inflammatory means a lot to my skin type. Final step for my morning routine, we're going to be using my favorite SPF. This is another Biosense product. I think Biosense might be the only brand in here twice as an absolute favorite, but yes, their Squalene and Zinc Sheer Mineral Sunscreen. Mm, this is a very nice sunscreen. The thing with this sunscreen is that it buffs in so quickly, you know, with it being a completely mineral sunscreen, they always have this white cast to start off with. For me, it's what happens to that white cast. Look at that buffing in, you see that? See that disappearing into my skin? You guys wanna know something so funny? So I used to have a bit of a pet peeve over people calling sunscreen SPF, but so many people in the skincare community do it that eventually I hit a point where I was just like, I guess I call it SPF now, and that's what I do. I'm like, this is the SPF I'm using today, even though SPF is actually the measure and not the name of the product itself. One day Ara's home and I was editing one of my videos and she's like, why do you keep calling sunscreen SPF? You're calling it the measurement instead of the product. And I'm like, oh, I used to have that same pet peeve and I gave in to peer pressure. I have five more favorites that I wanna take you guys through in this video. So first off, my Hum Skin Squad pre and probiotic. I've been talking about this for over a year on this channel. This is indeed not a skincare product, but a supplement and it is probiotics, a very beautiful blend of probiotics. I do have a dedicated video on this if you are interested, uh, but what I wanna say is this. Uh, so acne can be caused or at least exacerbated by an imbalance in the microbiota in your gut. If that is the case for you, using probiotics may actually help you so much to the point of, oh, this is a life-changing product. That's been the story for me. This is really 
This is where my cystic acne stopped. It's kind of funny because I had tried probiotics before this one, but Hum specifically used probiotic strains that have been tested for the purpose of acne, and they just came up with such an incredible product here. And I have talked about how since that video, I've gone on to use this more in a maintenance type of way. I now take one a day instead of two, and that seems to help me keep the acne away, whereas up front I was taking two a day. So I've got it down to a $20 a month supply, and for me to keep cystic acne away, mm, that is everything. The Inky Lists BHA, I still use this about two to three times a week, kind of as a preventative measure against keeping acne from forming in the first place. Now this is actually the only chemical exfoliant that I have in my favorites for this video, and I think that a lot of that is where I am in my skincare journey. You know, right now I'm really trying to keep new breakouts from forming, so it's not as critical for me to attack the scars. I do have some scars, it's kind of, they're not really intense scars, it's just kind of more blotchiness in this area. I have some just kind of strange looking patches of skin. Eventually I will try to attack that with some AHA type of products, but for now I'm just more focused on not having any new breakouts. And that's why I have a BHA favorite instead of an AHA. Again, it's just, it's just where you are in your skin journey. And then also, of course, the Kate Somerville Eradicate, because I do sometimes still get breakouts, had a little pimple on my forehead. Uh, and so what I do is I use this at night, just a dab. It is absolutely an incredible product. Yes, it does contain alcohol, but I found that for me personally, as long as alcohol is formulated well into a product, it's actually not the end of the world. Well, this video is full of controversy. What I would ultimately say Eradicate does for my pimples is instead of them being a two week experience, you know, a long enough time frame where I've named my pimple, oh yeah, he's Fred, don't mind him, he'll be gone in two weeks. Instead of having that experience, I have a pimple for three to four days, that's it, and then we're done. Ah, uh, CBD, yet another anti-inflammatory ingredient. Oh my gosh, I love the Lord Jones brand. I am so, so, so happy that I got a comment on one of my videos saying, oh uh, yeah, you should try the Lord Jones brand. They're kind of the highest in CBD. This is the Royal Oil. It is the highest CBD content that I have found in an oil product. It's pricey, but a little goes a long way, and it is very multi-purpose. I do use this if I have any inflammation on my skin, just a single drop is enough. And I also do use this to help me sleep, and it has been absolutely incredible for helping me to sleep. I'm finally ready to admit just how good the Milk Makeup Melatonin Overnight Lip Mask is. I it's funny because for me, the, the Milk Skincare line has been really hit or miss. Their sticks, mm, 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 mm. I found some beautiful something growing on my milk sticks. Not really a huge surprise. They are sticks you rub onto your skin, exposed to the bacteria on your skin. Let them sit in the humid bathroom or your just humid city, if you are me. Yeah, we, uh, I'm done thinking about this. It is completely possible to really dislike products from a brand and then also really love other products. And that's my case, that's my story with the overnight lip mask. This is so beautiful, so hydrating, lasts throughout the entire night. You wake up, you still feel it on your lips. I have but one final favorite, and that is actually a mask. Now here's something interesting. I'm not the biggest mask person, in particular wash off masks, and I feel like this might make a ton of sense if you take into account that I already said earlier in today's video that, you know, I use micellar water to avoid using excess water because of our water supply here. So there could be a very, very clear reason why, for me, an extra step of extra water is something I have to avoid. So I feel like it goes without saying that my favorite mask is, of course, a Levon, and it is an anti-inflammatory type of mask. This is First Aid Beauty's Arnica Rescue and Relief Mask. No, Relief and Rescue Mask. So this product was originally sent to me by First Aid Beauty. I went on to repurchase it. And you know, this is the mask that made me start paying attention to this ingredient of Arnica, which is yet another, get ready for it, anti-inflammatory ingredient. Nobody is surprised. 
And I use this mask anytime my skin is starting to look really irritated. You know, I'll, I'll occasionally get some redness, not necessarily associated with acne, but sometimes just patches of redness, and I'll use this at night. They say to apply it for 15 minutes, and then you can tissue it off or massage it into your skin. Go figure, I have dry skin, so you know what I do. But that is it. We have come to the end of my skincare favorites for 2020 so far. Let me know in the comments section below any skincare products that you've been loving this year. I feel like there's just so many skincare products in this world that it's completely possible that I have not even tried some of your favorites. And I also want to make sure that you guys know that I am doing a giveaway over on my Instagram that includes not just my skincare favorites, but also my beauty favorites. I tried to make it a, a, a good mix, a nice balanced blend of products for whatever level you may be at. So make sure you check that out. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.